Hi, my name is Steven Locke, and in this video, I'll give an introduction to using state machines in your Arduino projects, as well as a quick example using an LED and push button. A finite state machine is an abstract machine which performs actions based on its current state. They aren't some magic method, but rather a way of organizing your code. If you've used a switch statement and with a little practice, you can use your own state machines in your Arduino projects. Some key features are that state machines can only be in one state at a time, state machines have a finite number of states, and each state exhibits different behaviors and functions. One can change states as a result of external inputs, also known as transitions. State machines are rather intuitive for Arduino as projects run in a constant loop and often use many sensors to react in response to an environment. Again, I want to reiterate that a finite state machine isn't new to code, but it's simply a way of organizing code in distinct blocks and behaviors. In order to start using state machines, you'll need to draw a state transition diagram. This diagram will visualize the specific transitions in many states for your device and will streamline the process. Before explaining a basic example, I'd like to note how there are a few disadvantages of state machines. Firstly, complex systems such as preparing a jet for takeoff have an overwhelming amount of states and transitions. This makes coding extremely tedious and almost impossible to keep track of what state is present and the potential transitions. Additionally, if your code has too many states, this can become computationally expensive for a microcontroller, which doesn't always have the most memory or processing power for complex tasks. In this quick example, a LED is being turned on with a push button. The boxes represent states, while the arrows represent transitions. The push button being used in this example is the type that completes the circuit as long as the button is pressed. The starting position for this machine is when the LED is off, state 0. The next state, and only other state, is when the light is on. This is obviously done by pressing on the button, which serves as a transition between the two states. Once the button is pressed and the state changes, the light will turn on and the machine will be in state 1. The machine will continue to stay in state 1, lighting the LED, until the button is released. At this time, there will be another transition back to state 0 before the light is off. With no presses, the light will continue to stay off and the state will not change. This is obviously a simple example for a state machine, but it includes the basics, a starting position, transitions, and states. Alright, so now I'm going to briefly explain the circuit that we have. So I have a yellow LED, a 220 ohm resistor, um, the cathode side is connected to pin 2, and the anode side is connected to ground. I have this little push button here. Uh, I'm going to use a pull-up resistor. So, one side is connected to ground here, and the other side is connected to pin 8. So, as I mentioned in the previous state diagram, it's going to be in state 0 when nothing is being pressed. It's going to stay there, but until I press the button, it's going to transition to state 1. So, here, it briefly flashed to state 1 and the LED turned on, and if I hold it, it's going to stay in state 1 as mentioned, and once I let go, it's going to transition to state 0. Alright, so I'm going to go over the code real quick. So as you can see in the very beginning of my program, I just set a couple constants. Uh, this key constant here, state underscore FSM, represents what state my state machine is in. So right now, I set it equal to zero. This is because state zero is when the LED is off, and this is just the default state. So here, uh, in the setup section, I'm just setting a bunch of outputs and inputs. But the key one is that I set the button as input underscore pull-up. This is because I'm using a pull-up resistor for my button. It's just generally good practice. Um, so here I go to the loop, which is the actual meat of the program. So I'm using a switch statement here, as I mentioned in the first slide. Uh, using switch statements are really good because they're simple, it's really clear to read, you can really tell which state you're in by the case. And for this switch statement, my variable is my state underscore FSM, which tells me which state I'm in. So as I said it from the beginning, that variable is equal to zero, so I'll be going to case zero. And here the LED is off and it just keeps looping in state 0 because there's no transition. However, it will transition when the pin 8 equal equal low, as you can see here. And that's just the nature of the pull-up resistor that when I press the button, 
digital read of eight pin eight is low. And in here, it's gonna transition. So we set state of underscore FSM equal to one, because now we wanna go to state one. So my loop will go, and now we'll be in case one, and the LED will be on. It'll just keep being in the state as long as I keep pressing the button. It will never transition out until digital read of pin eight equals high, and that's when I release the button. And then we're gonna transition back, state underscore FSM equals to zero. So this loop will continue as long as I power the Arduino, and then here's a serial monitor. So a serial monitor is great for debugging because maybe you don't have an LED to represent which state you're in, and you're trying your program, you're getting confused, you have a million states. All right, use a serial monitor. So here, I'm just setting up the serial monitor, and I'm printing the state every single time that the loop runs. So right now, I'm not pressing the button at all, and we're always in state zero. Now when I press a button, and I hold it, now we're always in state one. And when I release it, state zero. Obviously, this is an easy example, but when you want to do stuff that has like, let's say, 50 states, I don't know why you do that, but let's say you have 50 states. You need to keep track of it, use the serial monitor, otherwise you're just gonna be debugging for a really long time. So I hope that video was pretty clear and gave you a basic introduction to what a state machine is, how to draw a basic state transition diagram, and how to implement it in code using a switch statement. Obviously this was a really basic example, but once you know the basics, you can very easily start doing more complex state machines. I will soon be uploading a second state machine video for a real life device that I made, so make sure to watch that too. This device will help you keep track of your important items such as a wallet or keys when you leave your house and will help alert you if you forget to put them back when you re-enter. This will be significantly more complex than the example I gave in this video, so if you like this one or have any questions, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more Arduino-related projects.